Hi, and welcome to Live Long, Live Well. I'm your host, Mark Maxwell. Well, today we're in beautiful Auburn Hills, a city that's rapidly becoming a mecca for pickleball, a game that's gaining popularity across the United States and around the world. And one of the reasons pickleball is so popular is that you could play it at almost any age, and it's also a lot of fun. And with me today is uh, Dick Manasseri, and, and Dick, tell me, uh, as an ambassador for the USAPA, why is pickleball growing uh, by leaps and bounds? Well, it is growing, and in the USAPA, we keep track of that. So there's tens of thousands of people that are playing pickleball, and the reason basically is it's just so much fun. If you, if you go to a place where people are playing pickleball, whether they're 10 years old or 80 years old, you'll hear laughter and, uh, uh, and excitement, and uh, people just really enjoying chasing a ball. It goes back to the notion of a ball and play. It's pure play, and people enjoy it. I think what we're going to talk about a little bit today is the fact that it's recreational, it's play, but people also get into competition, and they want to improve their skills. So... Uh, it's all of those things. That's great. And, and today we have a, a few pickleball champions that are joining us that are, that are going to teach us the finer points of the game. We're going to learn about uh, warm-up drills, how to serve, all the different shots involved in the game, and a little bit about strategy, too. So, pickleball, get in the game. I hope you enjoy the show. All right, it's really important that you warm up before you play. Uh, if you have an opportunity to do some speed walking or jog a little bit, you want to get your heart rate up, warm your muscles up, increase your circulation. And then after you're warmed up, you can do some upper and lower body stretches to uh, stretch out your muscles. And then we're going to move to the court, my partner and I. And we'll just start off nice and easy. And we're just going to dink back and forth. The whole idea is not to make it perfect. It's just to get used to the feel of the ball on the paddle. Nice and control. We're doing some forehands and backhands. Watching the ball, working on eye hand coordination, moving our feet, just nice and gentle. And then, when we're done with that, after you do that a couple minutes, then we're going to move to a volley. It's a little bit faster. Again, forehand and backhand. The joy of pickleball for me is that in every racket versus ball, paddle versus ball sport I've ever played, there's always something to bring to this game, whether it's the broad strokes of the ground strokes or the artful, uh, crafty shots that are at the net. For me, I can play this game and enjoy it and use all of the talents that I've developed over the years in all the other racket sports. Hi, well, we're back, and we're going to get started by looking at some of the basic rules of pickleball which can be quite confusing to the beginner. So to help us out, we've got a couple of pickleball experts, Lewis Forrest and Nancy Tanis. We also have Linda Sparks with us, and her and I are going to help with the demonstration. You guys ready to go? Absolutely. Let's, go. Let's get started. Yeah, play. Okay, we're going to get started playing. We'll play to 11 points. The serve begins in the right-hand court. I'm standing behind the baseline. My serve must be underhand. I contact the ball below my waist, and the paddle head is below my wrist. Watch the ball follow through, and it must be served diagonally past the short service line to my opponent's uh, service box. The serve may not hit the net, and we continue to play until there's a fault or a point one. The lines of the court are all good. And during play, if the ball hits the net, it is in play. Okay, we just discussed the serve. The, most, the second part of this serving equation is we, we refer to as a two-bounce rule. That refers to the ball has to hit on, on the court twice before you can enter that zone or move forward. So basically, if I'm serving the ball to Nancy, the ball is going to bounce one time on her side. When she returns it, I'm going to stay behind this line I have to wait till she returns it, and when it bounces, which would be the second time, as I'm returning it, now I go forward to the kitchen if we're playing doubles. Does that make sense? All right. If she's serving the ball, this would be one bounce, return, she re returns it, two bounce, now I can come forward on the, third, on the third shot. If it's the opposite, same thing. So the ball has to hit twice in the court, once, twice before this person can come forward, can't take it out of the air. It's got to bounce. So if she serves the ball, I return it. She can't take it out of the air. It's got to bounce. So it's very important to stay behind this baseline until you've returned that second bounce. Okay, the kitchen. 
The moment, as we discussed earlier, the moment I return that ball off the second bounce, my objective, anybody's objective, is to come right into the kitchen. Right here. We cannot stand on the line or enter the zone unless the ball drops in the court in front of us. So basically, this is where you want to be in doubles. This is your, your, your strategy zone. This is where you're going to have control. You don't want to get caught in the back court. So the key is, when you're rallying here, you want to return the ball without stepping past the line. The only time I can enter this kitchen area is if the ball drops in that zone. So if I was to hit a ball soft, like so, she can step in and hit it, so can I. All right? But I cannot return the ball while I'm in the kitchen if it's in the air. It's got to bounce. So your objective is, once you dink it over, you want to pretty much be prepared to step back across the line, unless you know they're, you're into a, d a dinking uh, position here. Now you also can't follow through into the kitchen after you're hit. Exactly. That's true. You have to maintain control, and that's footing and racket control. So I can't, lean, I can't touch my racket in here, and I can't follow through and fall into the zone. So it's very important. Basic rule is just let the ball come to you. If you can't reach for the ball, then step in here and drop it over. Now I can step back. Okay? Okay. All right. The serve rotation begins uh, in the right-hand court, player one. I'm serving it diagonally. When I lose the serve, it now goes across to the other team. The player in the right-hand court will serve. When the rally is over, he loses his serve. His partner will serve. So both people on the side will be serving, will have served. After Max completes his serve, the ball comes back to our side. And player in the right hand court will, the player in the right hand court will now serve again. From here on in, both players on each team will serve. I like pickleball. In fact, I love pickleball. I think one of the reasons is um, I really want to do, I really do want to live long and I really do want to live well. And uh, activity like pickleball that's uh, good for the body, good for the heart. But it's also good for the mind and, and your, uh, your spirit. And you make friends and you laugh and have a good time. If you want to compete, you can. If you want to just get out and recreate with pickleball, there's lots of opportunities to do that. So uh, pickleball just meets my needs for staying healthy and having a lot of good friends. And uh, um, it's something you might want to look into. Uh, I'd like to, we'll cover three serves. Basically, you have a, what we call a, a natural lob type serve. And then you have a short serve and more of a drive type serve. So I'm going to start with the drive serve. Which has and I'm little... waiting behind the baseline. I don't want to creep up. I want to be behind the baseline. So you notice that serve has a little more pace. Now, I can also go to a lob type serve, which puts it a little bit deeper into the court. The advantage of that is it gives me a lot more time to get up to the kitchen and it puts a little more pressure on my opponent to make a better shot. Okay, and the third type of serve is a short serve. What I'm going to basically do when I'm serving behind the line, I'm going to take my, my serve and pretty much try to drop it a little bit shorter so I force my opponent to have to come in towards the net. The only problem with this serve, it's a little more advanced serve because you need a little bit more control. You notice it pulls her in. And I get an error sometimes. Okay, so those are the three basic serves. The semi-fast paced drive serve, the lob, high lob, and a short serve. The basic thing you want to concentrate on is when you're starting out is not working on speed and lobs, but just putting the ball in play and keep it at about half to three-quarter court. And then you'll have control of keeping your opponent where you want them. Okay? The server and receiver not, don't creep in because you got to remember it has to bounce. Yeah, it's very important. You come we'll, up. we'll get onto that in a little later in the subject, but it's very important. Most of the problems that occur with the beginner players is they, they don't stay back behind the line. And what ends up happening when you step in, the person hits a, a, a serve deep. Now you're out of position for the shot, so it doesn't give you ample time to make an effective return. If the serve does hit the net and goes into the box, it is considered a let and it's a reserve. Exactly. But if it hits the net and is short or not in the box, it is no good, side out. Exactly. And secondly, or lastly, when you're serving, this middle line is good. 
I can't hit the short line or the kitchen line, but I can hit the down the middle, so that's still effective. At this point, we're going to talk about the forehand and the backhand. Basically, the forehand grip is just taking your hand, placing it on the paddle face, coming down and shaking hands. That's basically a conventional grip. Sometimes the more advanced is turning the racket slightly behind you so the V is slightly behind the, the grip, or for the backhand, it would be behind it. But for now, we're going to just focus on keeping the same grip for both forehand and backhand. So what I want to basically do is, when I step in to make contact with the ball, I always want to make sure that I'm making contact with my lead foot. So that when I step in to make contact with the ball, I'm contacting it off my lead foot, and I just want to follow through low to high, just like so. Okay? You can go ahead and just return it. Yeah. So I bring the ball up off my lead foot, follow through. Oh, yeah, I'll get it. Okay. The backhand. Similar. The difference is, instead of coming across my body and letting my left arm go away from me, the backhand, I keep the left hand under me, and I slightly follow through and let the, the racket go away from me. So I'm, it's really much easier in some aspects. I'm making contact again off the lead point of my foot. I make contact with the ball here, low to high, follow through, and let my racket go on an upward swing all the way through. So basically, it looks like so. Step in, follow through. Good morning, my name is Lewis Forrest. I'm an ex-Touring Pro with, with Wilson for racquetball and w one of the reasons that uh, pickleball has attracted me and you're probably wondering why this attracted a racquetball player, it's because there's a lot of similarities and the game is at a point where it's uh, you don't have to be a professional athlete or a great athlete, it's, it's just so much fun that uh, the game has enough versatility and attraction that uh, it'll, it'll grab everybody. So. Uh, that's one of the reasons that I love the game, and I'll continue to love the game. Thank you very much. Okay. All right, now we're going to review three parts of the game that are primarily played at the net. The volley, the dink, and the overhead. Um, your grip is going to be, as Lewis explained, a grip where you put your hand on the racket, just follow it back and hold on to it. You're not going to change the grip on going between forehand and backhand here. You won't have time. Everything happens real fast. A volley is a ball hit before it bounces on the ground. I'm going to hit one in demonstration. Okay. <laughs> there we go. Don't. In this, you get to it before it hits the ground. Okay. And as far as stance, you want to be in an athletic stance with the weight on the balls of your feet, uh, knees bent, racket out or paddle out in front of you. Okay. And again. You're going to keep the paddle out in front of you. Okay, we'll try a couple more. Yeah, volleys. Yeah, volleys. Yep. Okay, very good. Excellent volleyers here. And again, when you hit the ball, you, you move your weight into it a little bit. Uh, sometimes though you just have to stretch to get it. Um, the next shot that we're going to talk about is the dink. The dink different from the volley is that the ball's going to bounce. And you're going to keep it soft and you want to hit it in such a way that it stays low so your opponent has to hit up on it. And you're looking, basically you're hitting it to try to get them to make a mistake. Um, same thing as far as setup. You can start with an athletic position with your knees bent, weight on the balls of your feet. Um, Rack it out in front of you. Again, you're not going to change your grip. So we're going to hit the ball. It's going to bounce. It'll hit back. Very good. And we just keep working the ball. Very good. And in this, in this shot, you can step, once the ball bounces inside the kitchen area, you can step into the kitchen area. You can see we're playing with excellent volleyers and dinkers. <laughs> All right, that's a good now, one. Now, on, on some of these, when you're dinking, one of the strategies is you try to set up an angle to open up the court a little bit. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to volley it to Lewis. When he gets an opportunity, or when I get an opportunity, we're going to hit it real wide to try to pull someone off the court. That opens up the court, OK? Very good. 
It's going to go over there, and then you can look for an opening. Okay, very good. Good idea. Excellent. Okay, now, the next shot we're going to look at is going to be the overhead. And again, this is, this is usually, typically, in this game, especially indoors and, and outdoors too, an overhead, it can be offensive or defensive shot, but many times it's a defensive shot to try to get your opponents back. Okay, when you're setting up for an overhead, the person hitting it, they're going to turn and the, the ball goes up in the air, overhead is hit over your head, uh, the ball goes up in the air, the person turns sideways and then tracks the ball forward or backward, track it with your forward hand, which I'm right handed so it will be my left hand, and you move back and forth like this. You, you see a lot of people, the common mistake is people go like this and try to hit it. You've got to turn your body sideways. It's, it's a relatively easy shot if you turn sideways. And you set up. You have a couple hits to me. Throw it up pretty high. There you go. Move into it and just hit it. On this shot, another thing that you see people do, good. I'll step in and hit it. Hit him sideways. Step in and hit it. One thing that you keep, see people do regularly is they try to hit as hard as they possibly can. When you're hitting it from up here, you have such an advantage up here already, you don't have to hit it that hard. It, you're actually better off placing it. Okay? Um, and that, that's what we want to do. Okay? All right. We talked about, we discussed quite a bit about the different types of shot selections, the dink, the overhead smash, the volley. What I'd like to talk about is when and where to use these types of shots. For example, let's start, let's go back to the baseline. My objective, or our objective as, as players, is when I serve the ball to Vic, I have to wait, obviously, for the second bounce. So I've got to wait till it's returned. But the moment that I return the ball, my objective, and both of our objectives, is, is my partner, is to move up as fast as we can to the kitchen. Because this is where we have control. This is where we win or lose points. And our objective is to have control here. This is when you're going to use the dink. This is when you're going to use the overhead smash, depending on when they give it to me. If they don't give me an overhead smash, then I don't get it, obviously. But the, the key is, the very important aspect of this game is once you return the serve, follow it, come up to this zone. Secondly, when you're returning serve or receiving serve, stay far enough back behind the line. Typically, most errors occur because a majority of people when they're starting out will stand either on the baseline or slightly in. The good players will hit their serves deep. Even the, even, the, even the beginners will hit them deep. So you don't want to have to come in, then go back, and then go back again. You want it all in one motion. So if you're staying back a couple feet behind the line or so, I have ample time to read the ball, see it, whether it's going to be in or out, and I have time to physically step in and make good contact and good follow through. Now I can follow in in one motion to the kitchen. I don't have to be going in two and three different steps. Same thing in the kitchen zone. When I come up, this is not where you want to stand. You want to make sure you come up pretty close to that kitchen line. Even a foot back is the difference of you making a good shot or a bad. You want to basically just be up in the kitchen zone, like I am here, and let the ball come to me. If the ball doesn't come to my paddle from right here, odds are that means I have to reach. If I have to reach, then that's going to be when I step into the kitchen zone and I'm going to do what we refer to as a dink. Okay. Okay, do you have anything to add to that? Dick? Um, yeah, um, as far as, as, as he was saying, when he's serving, his objective is to hit the ball deep. I've got to wait for it to bounce to hit it. On my return, I want to also hit the ball fairly deep. We're, we're both looking to get an advantage at the net. Okay, that's what this is all about. You're working the ball so you can get the advantage in trying to get your opponent on a defensive position. Exactly. And so he's going to try to serve fairly deep to me, but safe. He doesn't want to give away. It's, it's on, in both sets of circumstances, it's, it's a very bad idea, bordering on stupid, to hit the ball out. He shouldn't hit a serve that's so risky that he may hit it out. It should be safe. He shouldn't give away a point. My return should be the same. It should not be a risky shot. It should be deep, and I'm going to come in behind it. He's going to come in behind it. We're going to battle it out. We refer to this as unforced errors and forced errors, all right, or clean errors. If I'm in a rally with Vic, if he's returning the ball to me and I'm in deep court, 
it does not make sense for me to rip or hit the ball hard because now I've set myself up for an unforced error. It's either going to go deep or it's going to go shallow into the net. Where, where that's very important is when you're in this zone here in the kitchen. I see a lot of people taking shots from right here and trying to rip them over the net into the court. It's almost impossible physiologically and mathematically because you're, you're, your net's at 34 inches in the center, you're seven feet off. You pretty much have to bring the ball and you have to have a lot of pace. So the objective is, that's why it's so important for the dink. You want to make that opponent have to come into the net until they give me an opportunity when they leave one up here. Now I can put it down or if it's from shoulder high, I can hit that shot if I want. But anything from here down, it's very difficult to get it over that net and keep it in a 15-foot zone of the back court. So my, my best shot is if Vic rallied to me is just to dink it back over unless he pops it up. If he happens to pop it up here, now I have a nice overhead, right? Well, hi. Well, we're here with uh, pickleball champion Vic Witkowski. And, uh, you know, Vic, I, I talk to a lot of senior athletes that are involved in all kinds of sports. And uh, one of the things that the seniors, uh, and, I, and other people do too, is they really struggle with that, that last point of a game. They seem to focus uh, in on not losing rather than winning. And uh, what, do, what do you do when you're uh, at game point in a match? What are the mental, what's the kind of mental uh, techniques do you use to help you win that last point? Right. Um, it, it's, it is very hard, and it's, it's, you have to keep very disciplined. And basically, you keep doing what you've been doing to get you to that point. You don't want to change anything. Um, you see so many people that they, they try a little harder or they try to do this and that, and that's not what got them there. Keep on with what you were doing. And you may want to think about that, but that way you, you've been successful because you're to that point. So you want to build on that and just keep going in that direction. If you've been hitting to the guy's backhand and winning, then just keep doing that. But don't try something extra special. Just try to keep doing what you've been doing. You know, it really seems that the most successful athletes, the ones that are the real winners, is that uh, they are able to stay in the moment. They don't lose their focus at all. Instead of concentrating on score, they seem to focus in on just that one particular shot. They go back to their basic fundamentals, the roots, the, the roots of the game. They, they, they stick with that, but they're able to, more than anything else, being in, being in that zone, being staying in the moment. Do you think that's true? I think it is that true, and I think that you, you don't want to put that pressure on yourself that I have to win winning. You're more um, going to try to execute when you're out there. If you execute well, then chances are you're going to win. But if you've got the thought of winning or losing on your mind, I think you just put added pressure on yourself and sometimes that's too much. I think that's a really good point. Basically, take winning and losing out of the equation exactly. and focus in on the point at hand and doing, do what you do best. Do you think that's good advice? Oh, oh, exactly. Um, and you can, you can look at all sports, whether you're looking at the, the guys playing Wimbledon or the guys playing golf. If, you know, if they're, they're thinking of something other than just executing, just making that stroke, they've just put an extra burden on themselves and they just made it tougher for themselves to accomplish what their goal, what they want to do. I think that's really good advice, Vic. And uh, for all you people out there, first of all, get in the game and then win it. Well, we just had a great time here in uh, Auburn Hills. And I just want to thank the uh, Auburn Hills Community Center for hosting us today and for all that they're doing in recreation and for the game of pickleball. And we had uh, just lots of great instruction from our experts today. And uh, we need to carry that on, use that in your games on a daily basis. And, and Dick, thanks a lot for being with us today and, and uh, bringing all these uh, great people to uh, show us the game. And tell us, uh, what can we look forward to in the future from pickleball? Well, I think pickleball is going to continue to grow. They're playing in India, they're playing in Europe, they're playing on cruise ships, and of course they're playing you know, from Arizona to Michigan all over the United States. So get in the game, as, as we've said before. It's a lot of fun. I think you'll pick just a couple of things you've learned today, a couple of pieces of strategy, a couple of techniques, and have fun and improve your game and uh, get involved, whether it's at the recreational level or the competitive level. It's a game for all people. Yeah, that's great, Dick, and uh, thanks again for, for being here. And remember that uh, the ball may be slow, but the game is fast. So remember, pick a ball, get in the game. We'll see you next time on Live Long, Live Well.